Okay, so today we are going to talk about humidity and dew point and relative humidity. So when we take a look at these, we need to understand that the amount of moisture the air can hold is temperature dependent. So as the temperature goes up, the amount of water vapor the air can hold goes up. So the warmer it is, the more air it can hold. So when we take a look at humidity, there's different types of humidity. There's specific humidity, which is the actual amount of water vapor in the air. Um, it's labeled in grams of water vapor over a kilogram of air. So the amount of water is actually relatively small uh, when we talk about the mass of it. Uh, if we have saturated air, um, it's the amount of it's when the amount of condensation equals the amount of evaporation and that is when the air just cannot hold anymore. Uh, once again it's dependent upon the temperature. The higher the temperature the more it can hold and the water vapor in the air doubles every 10 degrees Celsius. Now the thing that you have to understand is 10 degrees Celsius is a lot. So air temperature is about 20 degrees uh, Celsius so the amount it's 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 it sounds like a lot but it doesn't fluctuate that much the dew point is something that's actually used more often as an indicator of how much moisture is in the air and the dew point is the temperature at which the air is cooled becomes saturated and condensation begins now the more water vapor in the air the less that it has to cool so if we take a look at that September night when it's really sticky out it doesn't have to cool that much in order for dew to take place. Um, whereas if we're talking about May, um, it's, it has to get way low in order for it because there's, uh, the air is cooler and there's not as much air in it. The relative humidity is the comparison between how much water it can hold as to how much is in there. And it is given in a percentage. So right now the relative humidity in this room is 20%. So that means at 74 degrees Fahrenheit, the amount of air that can be held in here, there's 20% of it. That means that it could hold four times more air, that being another 20, another 20, another 20, another 20%. So right now the air inside is relatively dry. Um, just because of, of the time it is. Some of you might have humidifiers in the winter time adding moisture to the air to raise that relative humidity. And how do we measure them? Um, one way, well, it's called a hygrometer. And these are three different types of hygrometers. Um, this is a hair hygrometer. And it's called a hair hygrometer because in the early days, uh, they actually used hair. And for some of you, when it's really hot and humid out, your hair just does odd things or it becomes curlier. Um, I, I'm not quite for sure what it does, honestly. But those early hygrometers used uh, hair. This is one that you'd hang on the wall, and this is one that we are going to use um, in labs. Uh, most of the time, a hygrometer... Um, some of them will have a wet bulb and a dry bulb. And the dry bulb is just the thermometer on what is the temperature outside. And the wet bulb, it has an area, sorry my that comes up, that is filled with water and there's a wicking device and it's covered up again. That, that pulls that up and the wet bulb is always going to be cooler than the dry bulb. Um, and a hygrometer just sits there. A psychrometer is something that gets spun and as it spins about it also has a wet bulb and a dry bulb and they're a lot of times called a sling psychrometer um, with that idea that it's sing slinging a chrometer um, and we have to understand that when we evaporate it is, when water evaporates it's a cooling process it takes energy from whatever it's evaporating on it. So with the psychrometer, the drier the air, the greater the difference between the wet bulb and the dry bulb, the greater the cooling. It's going to, the drier it is, that water is going to evaporate and take that heat um, with it. High humidity, there's going to be less 
evaporation, that means that the temperature of those two bulbs are going to be the same. And when we take a look at that, there's going to be vapor pressure. The more moisture that's in the air, the less it's going to want to evaporate. So in our August, September, hot, humid falls and late summers, there's a lot of moisture in the air and your perspiration doesn't want to evaporate. Um, that is because it is so humid. Whereas if you take a look at Arizona, um, people retire and go there and it can be 104 and they can say it's nice because it's a dry heat. That means that the, the perspiration or the sweat is evaporating off from you and you feel more comfortable. So have a great day.